Right, so for all of Suella Braverman's performative pretense at giving a damn about remembering our war dead, remembering those who fought and died for our freedoms, for all of her claims that the peace march organised between Hyde Park and the US Embassy today, a full mile away from the Cenotaph, I might add, the far right being the ones who have desecrated the day, as it turns out. Braverman said the pro-Palestinians, the left wing, were the threat to their memories, to this day of armistice, a threat to the sanctity of today, and for all of Rishi Sunak's sulky statement the other day, voicing his disappointment that the Met Police were allowing, allowing that peace march scheduled for this afternoon at time of writing to go ahead, no basis for it to have been stopped after all. With the scenes being witnessed around the Cenotaph, as I've been writing this, it's a damn good job the police were not being deployed entirely to stop the peace march, when the hate mob, when Suella's black shirts, Braverman's black shirts, have already overwhelmed them in Whitehall. Make no mistake, Suella Braverman has incited this with what she has been saying for days and weeks now, and what she has been doing. She has been attacked by her own party for that, let alone any opposition parties also weighing in on her for her hateful conduct. And this is the end result, what we have seen today in Whitehall around the Cenotaph. She drove this. She's got to be sacked before the day's out. Right, so the word scum is one heavily contested when applied to politicians. The Tories didn't like it much when Angela Rayner called them scum, but scum they are when they have allowed a reprehensible hate figure like Suella Braverman to remain in her post, to even get into that post to begin with, let's be honest. One of the great offices of state, with the vile hard-right rhetoric she's become known for, that she's constantly coming out with, and which she's ramped up in recent days and weeks. Her talk of hate marches, after all, when applied to the rumoured-to-be record-breaking pro-Palestine march, scheduled for later today as I'm writing this. Though with what is happening in Whitehall around the Cenotaph right now as I am writing this, she ought to have looked towards those her words have incited. We knew the far right were coming. Social media has been awash with the words of the likes of the English Defence League and the Football Lads Alliance saying they've been called to arms and a flock to London. The excuse of causing a commotion and violence as they always do, too much to resist. And with the Home Secretary's comments egging them on, able to be used as reasoning for their backwards, slope-headed thinking, braying, England till I die. They've headed to the capital, dragging their knuckles all the way. She's encouraged the far right. She's encouraged more scum to come to London. Hard right fascist scum at that. And the scenes coming from Whitehall and around the Cenotaph, as the rest of us observed a respectful two-minute silence. They saw the police and to shouts of, let's have them and you aren't English anymore. The police got utterly overwhelmed. That was a hate march. That was a surge of vileness. The police were spread woefully thin. I can't imagine why there were so few of them there in Whitehall. I can only assume that perhaps there were a lot of police at Hyde Park because that's where Braverman demanded of Mark Rowley that that's where he deployed them since he wouldn't cancel the march. He had no grounds to do so. And with speakers lined up to address the demonstrators there from 12 noon, there will certainly be a police presence there. We're told there are 1,850 officers on duty in the capital today. They definitely weren't all at the Cenotaph, given that this is what they deployed to, deployed to guard it. More did show up to literally keep the mob from the monument, literally with their bodies, because the barriers proved insufficient in and of themselves. But we've been saying all week the pro-Palestine march isn't where the trouble will be, or at least won't be the cause of the trouble, because we've seen it all kick off well away from there, back in Whitehall, by the right wing. The Met blatantly weren't prepared for the pot of hate that Braverman has been stirring up all week, and that is their failing. The mob is in Whitehall quickly broke through the police cordon. They completely gave up on stopping people breaking through barriers. And bear in mind, they could have been armed with anything. Surely that surely they style themselves as patriots. I can only assume the bottles they were throwing at police were patriotic bottles then. But it can only take one individual with a spray can or another individual with a hammer to cause significant damage 24 hours before Sunak and Starmer pretend to give a damn about those who fought and died for us, along with all the civilian casualties of past wars that rarely ever get a mention but absolutely should, when both leaders are so set on seeing more death and destruction in Gaza. Imagine them laying a wreath before the cenotaph, graffitied in swastikas or something tomorrow. You'd think it wouldn't happen, that these people wouldn't do it. How many of them have such imagery tattooed on their beer bellies as they swan in, half-naked, draped in Union flags? 
The police rally from the footage I've seen were lucky they managed to stop them at the feet of the cenotaph itself. If you honestly think they wouldn't be so disrespectful, they didn't exactly observe two minutes silence here, did they? Do you not remember that time Paul Golding of Britain First went to the cenotaph with a pair of women's knickers on his head? They couldn't give less of a shit, and neither can Suella Braverman. The events of today, the disorder and violence being seen around that monument, which has been such a topic of being respected and not violated, for the, certainly this last week, in light of the coming demonstration for a ceasefire coming later today, has been driven by her words. She has shamelessly weaponized this weekend for her own political ambitions, for her own ends, nothing else. Her own desire to lead the Tory party and lead this country, God forbid. All this violence is about her. And she'll still, no doubt, if given the chance, blame the left for it. If she had a shred of decency, she'd resign seeing what she's done. Instead, she's probably watching those scenes unfold and was grinning at them. It's not prominent left figures being spotted there, though, is it? Stephen Yaxley Lennon, better known as Tommy Robinson, was there, along with the likes of Lawrence Fox and Calvin Robinson, formerly of GB News. GBBs, though, hardly in any, and I use this in the very, very loosest sense of the words, journalistic role, since both have now been sacked by the channel and good riddance to them. Of course, Braverman would be just shouting into the void if not for right-wing rags encouraging her and backing up their rhetoric. The Jewish Chronicle, Jewish Chronicle folks, published a piece by rampant Islamophobe Douglas Murray this week which carried the implication that the Nazis weren't all bad. The Daily Express, the Tory Graph, the Daily Fail, notably the paper with the pro-Nazi background, have all backed Braverman's calls to have the peace protest this afternoon banned despite the violence very much being committed by those more closely aligned to the Home Secretary herself. I'll single out the Evening Standard particularly for a hosing down over this, as they paired up the headline over the police and groups trying to get to the Cenotaph with a picture of pro-Palestine demonstrators, clearly not from today, and clearly not from anywhere near Whitehall. And it's important to reiterate that point about the peace protest again and again, so it sinks in with more people. The pro-Palestine march, the ceasefire march that is taking place this afternoon, they are at Hyde Park, nowhere near the Cenotaph. They are over a mile away. This is not them getting involved with the far right, but with only Regent's Park and a bit more between them once their peace march does begin this afternoon, I do genuinely fear. I fear it will be a foregone conclusion now, seeing the number of fascists in Whitehall, that they will leave there and head towards the peace march when it begins to intercept it somewhere along the line in order to cause disorder there. The Braverman will without doubt try and pin that on the left simply for exercising their free right to peacefully protest and demand a ceasefire and demand our government call for one instead of continuing to back Israel and continue to supply them with more weapons to kill more innocent Gazans with in the hope they hit some Hamas operatives while they're at it. Well, it's entirely on the government there. At this moment in time, numerous other media outlets are putting the blame firmly where it belongs, referring to the thugs in Whitehall as right wing and pointing to Braverman as the one being accused of inciting this. Sky News, notably, all very careful in their language, though, but we've all heard what she has been saying. We've all seen what she's been doing. We've seen Sunak spinelessly going along with her narrative, even if he can't bring himself to repeat her wording on such matters. So Anna Braverman has incited violence in the capital on Armistice Day of all days, the day that literally means ceasefire, and as Home Secretary, her position is now without doubt untenable. It was before. It's without doubt now. There's no excusing this. She has to go. She won't resign. She must be sacked, therefore. And Sunak needs to grow a set and do it, or he can go too. Because we can't afford to have this country led by somebody who can't even defend today of all days from his most rancid of MPs. It is inexcusable. It is unforgivable. Braverman is far too dangerous to ever be left in a position of responsibility and power. And those voters who have her on their ballot have a responsibility. I will put it on them. A responsibility at the next election to ensure she is removed from Parliament, how anyone can countenance wanting to be represented by her, I really don't know. But you're sick in the head, in my opinion, if she's your preferred option. Poll after poll shows she is the most unpopular MP in Parliament, and with good reason. These are her black shirts at the Senator, Braverman's black shirts. And her career needs to end because of what she's incited, because of what she has encouraged, which desecrates the meaning of Armistice Day which will now cast a shadow now over this entire Remembrance Weekend, and which we're unlikely to have seen the end of yet. Sunak realistically has until the end of today to do something about her, but I'm not going to hold my breath. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Please like, share and subscribe if you did. More content up daily. 
do have your say on this story in the comments below and be part of the conversation. Meanwhile, here's a video recommendation where all the warning signs were there already that this would be the outcome of Braverman's behaviour and I'll hopefully catch you on the next feed. Cheers, folks.